the ideal world, existence for the sake of existence, without too much change or strife, without passion and newness of knowledge, is a very mediocre world indeed. When focus prioritizes itself in inward, detailed, evaluative, conscious focus, there manifest purpose and will and veracity and passion, newness of knowledge. The independent needs of our independent purpose, self-proposed and evaluated and accepted, dictates our life to us. We speak to ourselves about experiences we feel pleasant or enraptured or disgruntled or aloof from. Our prejudice to purpose is our freedom. We create our reality out of affirmation and resignation. All things equal, one step towards purity is itself a resignation from impurity. To apply from a theoretical field where purity is to the field of everyday life experience is fundamentally a fallacy of composition, even as it is a freedom. For no action is pure, no judgment of law in ultimatum which cannot be circumvented by exception, or another trick of reason ultimate in itself. What therefore is the best means of understanding man, of communicating all fields of the experience around us, when reason and reasoning cannot be taken as ultimate truth? Perhaps an understanding as well of creation. What myths we have so long upheld have among their premises, it seems, a fundamental inequality. And for what? Because of our will to sustainability, to life, a will to prejudice, discernment, temporality, and death, justified because we are temporal, we are free, we know no truth. Being in a transitory state, ourselves between life and continuity and death and temporality, we have many implications already with our reasoning to abolish. The valid as true, the existence of causal opposites, the existence of the ideal, but this is difficult. Reasoning deals with all things outside our existence that are fixed. In the moment of life, there is one constant of change. In death, the movement of the inconsistencies of absolutes. By abolishing absolutes, we must cast out the moment of death, even as man is plagued by inconsistencies. It is a paradox that we live in, one of constant freedom, adaptation, and death. The very reality of time crumples away to the tool it is and the bonding nature through both spectrums extremes that it contains. Time relates the two in life. Life, time, and space and light, the soul exists only in the beyond, in truth, in beauty, in theory, in beyond theory, really. It cannot exist defined, for it is as much as it is undefined. Being relates it clearly. Existence is the extension or manifestation of it, in its realm beyond expression. Being is the field of space-time, and life is being's expressions. The spirit looks majestically, or beautifully, or squalidly, or dastardly upon itself, causing and affecting again and again. Purpose exists in the individual pieces, complexity, through definition or density as it is allowed. On another scale there is humanity, with its relation as different purposes to different cultures. One spirit for the culture as complex as a single man's spirit. Divided in a different way, not with cells but with professionals and positions and all sorts of specializations and power. Reason does not illuminate purpose, it categorizes. So how can we find purpose? If the universe did not escalate into the creation of our solar system, our planet, and eventually man, we as, as men have no more importance than other pieces of the universe. The brain is a microcosm of the universe, describing itself by terms of its separate and related parts. What difference is there in purpose between two contingent strands of neuroelectrical impulses from the perspective of the brain? There is no di difference physiochemically, only interpretively, or by way of cause and effect based on perception. What does this strand do? Well, it tells the body when to respond to some effect upon the left pinky toe, specifically making the toe contract. As a piece of the neurophysical field of our brain's actions, do we essentially have predispositions to a purpose beyond us? If our objective, the creation of an end or continuity of life via cause and effect, do not specialize us, what are we specializing according to? 
the efficiency of achieving our purpose, or is the purpose beyond us? The death of the cells of a body do not eliminate the body unless a critical number are destroyed. On the human scale, the death of a man does not destroy society or all men, and yet there are exceptions. It is imperative that the world be kept alive, no? It, in fact, is not. The death of the human race is minuscule compared to that of the universe or solar system, even. The functions of transmissions of cause and effect come to an end in death, whereupon the spirit may live in the possible world, only as a possibility not yet realized in cause and effect, in limbo. The spirit must journey, as a cell leaving the body through an abyss of unfamiliarity, leaving this world to one beyond the confines of cause and effect. Can such a world be realized in this one? And can we know it through spirit today? We are not quite ready to realize purpose and complexity, diversity and unity to opposition, as the world, yet. But to continue reasonably, there is expression and consciousness in the world as compared to planet X. Cause, expression, is life. Perhaps life as such can be purpose, as long as it causes the spirit's relation to itself, and only if it causes this relation. Death of man, by way of death of spirit, is the single independence of the human spirit from spirit or being. To separate and function independently, and so by means only for life, as humans, will only retrograde expansion of spirit, or catalyze contraction of spirit. But isn't it impossible to liberate oneself into non-being without death? It is, of course, at any case, no end of spirit, of being. It is only the end of human expression of spirit. More humans exist, more expression, and the spirit moves, cause and effect. There is never real distinction for cause and effect, just as cause is infinitely divisible, so is effect. How can human spirit be elucidated? Life for life's sake? What does this mean? It means something different from spirit in general, only due to our ability to compartmentalize. So the question is, what is human? It is, is it civilization? Is it consciousness? Is it dominance or power? How do we define man? What does it mean to be a human? What makes a human a human?